I'm Adam. And I'm Bubbles. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Hey Bubbles, did you see Mrs. Jenkins trying to climb that tree again to get a better view of the birds? Oh, mate, you know she's like a koala trying to become an eagle. Always reaching for the skies. Did you hear Mr. Thompson's latest joke about his dentures? That guy's got more cracks in his teeth than the sidewalk outside the bingo hall. Speaking of bingo, did you catch Mrs. Patterson's victory dance when she finally won last week? Oh, she was strutting around like she'd just discovered fire. I swear, those bingo dabbers are her scepter and crown. You know, Bubbles, getting old isn't so bad when you have friends like them to keep you laughing. Absolutely, mate. It's like we are all just a bunch of wrinkly kids with a few extra wrinkles and a lot more stories to tell. Maybe for you. I'm getting older, but I'm still not old. Today's book is a collection of short poems that celebrate trees and the amazing variety of ways they touch our lives. Perfect for Earth Day or Poetry Month. Let's get started. Old Elm Speaks, Tree Poems, by Christine O'Connell George, illustrated by Kate Keisler. Oak's Introduction I've been wondering when you'd notice me standing here. I've been waiting, watching you grow taller. I have grown too. My branches are strong. Step closer. Let's see how high you can climb. But... A tiny velveteen satchel, the color of pale cream, is perched on the tip of this bare branch. Snap open the clasp and you will find, inside this tiny valise, one rolled and folded, neatly packed leaf. Hide and go seek. Little sister thinks that tree will hide her. It is slender, she is wider. I pretend not to see a very odd tree with an elbow and a knee. Celebration. Wait here a minute. I'll bring your gifts. Ribbons for your branches, buckets of water, and a wheelbarrow of mulch. Happy Arbor Day. Ms. Willow. I was spending a delicious spring afternoon trailing my slim green leaves in the still cool waters. Gazing at my loveliness, such elegance, such perfection, when along came Heron, who landed in the middle of my glorious reflection. Tree traffic. Major tree traffic today. Commuters in both directions. Rippling up and down, tails unfurled. The tree way is heavily squirreled. Bridge. This tree across the stream is a trickier bridge than it may seem. Quick, quickly skipping our slow slip tiptoe. It's a wet and mossy, often soggy crossing. No breakfast. The only leaves left grow on the highest branches. The deer walk away. Hey Bubbles, did you know that trees are like nature skyscrapers? Really? Do they have tiny tree elevators inside? Ha! I wish. But they do have sap flowing like elevator music. Wow. That's quite the botanical symphony. Speaking of trees, have you noticed the koalas hanging out in them lately? Oh yeah, they're like the tree's VIP guests. Do you think they gossip about us while lounging in their eucalyptus condos? Probably. Those humans are at it again, making noises with their leaf blowers. And we're just here trying to teach kids about photosynthesis. Meanwhile, the koalas have a gossip party in the canopy. Well, if they ever need a break from eucalyptus gossip, they are always welcome to join me for some bird watching. Who knows, maybe they'll find a new branch manager up there. That would be a sight to see. A koala with binoculars critiquing the avian fashion choices? Beaver Dam. Do you see nod trees piled up like trash? Do you see a quick brown flash? Did you hear a splash? Must be that architectural team with another scheme to redesign the stream. Maple shoot in the pumpkin patch. Remember me? I helicoptered past your kitchen window last fall, then hovered over the pumpkin patch. 
I had traveled far on the wind that day, spending the whole entire way. I really hadn't planned to stay, only wanted to look around, lay my dizziness down, rest a moment on the ground. No one came to carry me aloft. The dirt was sweet and soft. I guess I must have dozed off. Tree Horse My tree horse shakes his rustling green mane, arches his neck, plunges his head down, whinnies sharply, his taut muscles strain. I hold on tightly as he rears up. We leap into the wind, vaulting toward sky. At night At night, when a branch scratches against the screen, I lie in bed as my tree whispers, Night is happening outside your window. Tree's Place Tree has staked its claim, anchoring itself firmly to Earth. Tree owns this place in the universe. Within this space, all belongs to tree. Turf, shaft of air, even slices of sun. Tree will not step aside for anyone. Tree stands its ground. When you meet tree, you must go around. Fly fishing in the crystal river. I hitch up my waders, step into the cold river, let out some line, gather up the slack, pull my rod back, snap my wrist, and catch a pine. Leaving Woods Lake, Colorado. I have it all planned. The pines will ride in the back seat with the windows down, the lake and the rowboats in the front. I'll sit in the middle between the squirrels and the dinner bell. I'll lash the log cabin with the red gingham curtains to the roof. I'll carry the columbine in my lap. My brothers will ride home in the trunk. Sketchbook on easel. Slowly the wind lifted pages of the artist's sketchbook so the birds in the trees could see. Between two trees, summer fills the empty space between two trees with a hand. Knot holes. I'm glad that our new fence came from a tree with lots and lots of knot holes. Not for naught are these knot holes, because if there were not lots of knot holes, I could not peer through and spy on you. Today we're diving into limericks. You know those short humus poems with five lines? Ah, limericks. I love M. Short, sweet, and to the point, just like a kangaroo's hop. I thought that kangaroo hops were pretty long. Alright, let's start with one. There once was a man from Peru who dreamed he was eating his shoe. Oh, I bet that was a tough chew. Right? Now, here's a challenge. Can you come up with a limerick about your favorite pastime, bird watching? Crikey, that's a good one. Alright, here goes. There once was an elephant named Bubbles whose love for birds caused some troubles. Can't wait to hear this. Perched on a branch, with a squawk and a dance, they'd fly off, leaving bubbles in bubbles. Bravo! That was amazing! Thanks, mate. Maybe I should start a poetry club. We could call it the Rhyming Ruse and Chirping Chums. That sounds like a hoot. Count me in. Done deal, Adam. Now, let's write some more poetry and watch some birds. It's a jolly good day, indeed. Poaching. The neighbor's fruit tree has come to visit, bringing ripe plums for dessert. Cooperation. Since there are two horses and only one tree in the pasture, an agreement was made to share this narrow strip of shade. So Molly and Ed, both rather plump, stand side by side. Muzzle to rump, rump to muzzle, like a jigsaw puzzle. King's Canyon. There is a doorway into this ancient sequoia that is just the right size for me to step inside. I hear its heartbeat. I breathe tree. Lullaby. Tree sighs softly as the birds patter about her heavy old branches, settling down, tucking their heads beneath their wings. She waits until dusk has shadowed her leaves, and when she's sure she's heard the last soft cheep, she rocks her birds to sleep. This blue spruce. This blue spruce arrived today in a coffee can, a scrawny sprig of prickles. Someday it will grow taller than the house. Someday 
this blue spruce will scratch the sky. Autumn. All summer long, trees studied the sun to learn the secret of her fire. First, they practiced tracing sunset rays along their ribs in colors remembered from hot summer days. Now, their chants on center stage, they rage yellow, gold, red, setting the hills ablaze. Storm. Last night, wind howled, lightning cracked. Before the thunder's boom, we heard a crash. Our tallest tree snapped and lay upon the The schooner's mast tossed by wild waves in the ocean of grass. This morning, all that I can see is a lot more sky and a broken tree. Street Tree. All day long, I stand here on the street, neatly clipped, a round headed shape. Minding my manners, I know my proper place. I don't spill leaves, never dripple sap. So meek and polite, no one knows that when all the cars go home, when I'm standing here all alone, I dream wild. I am forest. Destiny. Some trees will become grandfather clocks, carousel horses, grand pianos, podiums or front porches, totem poles or cathedral doors with intricate latches. Others pencils, toothpicks, or ordinary kitchen matches. Avalanche. A thousand pines are sprawled like broken toys, snapped like toothpicks by the crushing mass of snow that pounded down the steep mountain. They tell me it was over in minutes, a forest that took a century to grow, gone in a roar, an enormous thunder of snow. Broken string. The winter shows me how cleverly the trees have captured wayward kites. Old Elm Speaks. It is as I told you, young sapling. It will take autumn of patience before you snag your first moon. Any ideas on how we can help protect the earth? We can start an elephant-sized recycling program. I've got tons of peanut shells to contribute. What else do you think we could do for Earth Day? We can plant trees. And then I can watch birds in the trees. That's right. Trees provide homes for many animals, including birds. Now let's think of something else we can do to help the environment. I know. We can have a turn off the lights and listen to nature day. That's a fantastic suggestion, Bubbles. Saving energy is a crucial part to taking care of the Earth. I can't wait to tell the birds about our plans. They'll be tweeting about it for days. And if you'd like to help us out, please to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. And I'm Bubbles. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Did you know? Elmwood is strong and heavy and is used for flooring, furniture, and hockey sticks. It's also durable underwater, so it's used for boats and farm buildings.